Hey, if taping drywall frustrates you and it looks anything like this, you probably ought to get rid of all your tools and go back to something else. Hey, welcome to That Kilted Guy 3-Minute Drywall School, where we teach you drywall skills in about 3 minutes. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button now. First step is to make sure the mud is not too thick. That is one problem a lot of you have. It's kind of hard to describe on video, but you can see this is thinned down a bit, so it's not real thick. Now, one key is to mix it up really well. I've done other videos on that, but one way that you can do that is mix it right in your pan. If you don't have the big mixer in the bucket and all that, get this little mixer here from Level 5 Tools. You can get it as part of a complete kit with pans, knives, and this little mixer. And mix it up till it's nice and creamy because it will go from being thick to thin just by mixing it up a lot of times. It's going to feel thicker if you don't mix it up. Reasonably thin. You want it to be pretty thin, but not so thin that you get it off here and it just all runs off your knife and you're having problems with it dripping all over. Uh, the other problem, it would be using the wrong mud. Most of the time you're pretty safe. Like I said, any all purpose will generally work. Now we're gonna go on to tip number four, which is wiping it too tight. And I'll show you that here in a second. You can of often end up with blisters. Blisters means where there's a void behind the tape or you wiped it out so tight that there just wasn't enough to stick. And it will often appear to be stuck. But when you go to coat it, there wasn't enough adhesion and it lifts and you get a little blister like this picture here of the blisters on the ceiling. Another thing, that you might make a mistake with is if you put this mud on here, let's say, and you spread it out and you try and do too much and you come back and it started drying out a little bit. You don't want that. Dry spots are going to give you blisters. And tip number seven would be using the wrong tape. And again, that'd be like using this with regular joint compound. And tip number eight would be experimenting with things like dish soap. Overall, dish, dish soap isn't a problem, but if you put too much in, it could be. And overall, I find that it's just better not to experiment with the chemistry of the joint compound. They've got it this way for a reason. If you start tweaking it too much, you could affect the integrity of it and the adhesion. Now let's get into just showing you the right way to do it. So what you want to do is put on a, a nice thick layer of mud. It'd be better to put it on too thick than to put it on too thin. Now, of course, you guys, a lot of you will do it like this, and this is fine. If you do it like this, make sure you put plenty on, and then we're gonna go and just kind of lay it down and get it to, to even out. And you can see on the second camera here, it's nice and thick. But the way we do it works the same. It's just faster. If, you want, if you're gonna do much of this, you learn to really load that knife up and just simply and you notice I did that little flip. That's because it's kind of runny. And if I don't, you can see it's starting to run off my knife. So let me get it loaded back up here. And you see a little drip there. We just run it up the wall or on the joint, whatever you're doing there. And then just lay your knife down pretty far. So it's your knuckles are almost dragging, but you don't want to quite drag your knuckles. And then you just are trying to even it out. So the general rule with spreading mud is the more you stand your knife up, the more you wipe off. The more you lay your knife down, you can push pretty dang hard and it won't wipe off too much of the mud for you. So once you get that nice solid coat on there, you just wanna put your tape into it. Try and put it on nice and straight. You don't wanna get it too wrinkled. You can cut it like I did there. You don't want to have like this crookedness where you see the wrinkles starting to show. And then you generally wipe two wards each end. And for this case, you stand it up more because if you lay it down too much, you're not going to wipe enough out of it. I'll just push a little bit harder. Okay, and then we're going to come back down and wipe it out pretty good. Now, I'm going to show you how you can wipe out too much mud, and we will do that. Let's see if I can do it on the top here. We'll just try and really get carried away here. Going to make sure we got this thing stuck to this wall, right? And see, I took off quite a bit more mud. You don't want that to happen. Now, one way to check it is to do a little test like this and then peel it off. 
So we're gonna peel it off right here. And I'm gonna show you a close up of this here in a second, but you can see in the video probably that it kind of raises these little peaks. And down here, they're a little bit taller. Up here, there's actually some voids where I wiped it out so much that there just really wasn't enough left to stick it down. And hey, if you really want to take the confusion out of understanding all these different drywall tools and materials, I'm going to give away a copy of my new ebook called Understanding Drywall Tools and Materials. You can pick that up using the link in the description down below, or if that's a condensed version. If you want the full version, it's available in my store at that kiltedguystore.com. And I'm gonna help simplify all this. And I'm gonna show you why you don't need most of this. I'll show you what you do need and why. Hey, here's some more videos popping up for you that'll help you out right now. Thanks a lot. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Take care, everybody. We'll see you then. Mm -hmm.